Okay, I just saw this in the theater last night as I record this, and don't hate me because you probably can't see it in the theater because I think this was like a one week only thing, but I'm doing this for posterity. I'm doing this if anybody was curious what this experience was like, or if by the time you see and hear this, it's available streaming or on physical media, uh, that's what this is for. This is Shin Ultraman. This was an Ultraman movie made in Japan just this last year, released into US theaters just this week as I'm saying this. I think it was a one night only, maybe two nights, very, very specific uh, Fathom event style release, not a wide release. And it's the latest in the series of Ultraman content. Ultraman began, I wanna say 1966, as a Japanese TV series. I believe the people who were behind uh, Godzilla had some hand in this. I don't, I'm not really, a, I'm not big on Ultraman. I've always heard about Ultraman, but it was never a show that I could see until, in the scheme of things, relatively recently. So here's the deal. Ultra, this film is, again, made just a year ago in Japan, and it basically takes the aesthetic of the 1960s TV series and says, what if that happened for the first time now? So it's, uh, I hate the word reboot, but I guess you'd call it that. And it is an, another origin story for Ultraman, just saying, okay, this has never happened before, and it's happening in Japan, it's happening right now, and how does this go? So if you don't know what Ultraman is, he is, and again, not being an Ultraman aficionado, I'm gonna give you my best, halfest take on what the Ultraman is. He's basically a, a human being who is infused with alien powers, who when uh, the chips are down, he runs off where nobody can see him and he does a certain thing and he becomes this giant, like silver and red suited, glowing eyed superhero who fights giant monsters. Now, I grew up in, the, the, in New England watching Creature Double Feature on Channel 56, Boston's WLVI-TV, Channel 56. It was an independent station. And every, for my lifetime or my youth, every Saturday afternoon, there'd be two monster movies. And it could be universal horror, it could be AIP, it could be Amicus, but it was really usually, more often than not, Godzilla movies, Toho movies. I saw Attack of the Mushroom People that way for the first time. And I loved that stuff as a kid. So at, loving it as a kid, I still love it now. Uh, later discovering what Ultraman was and when they started re being released on DVD and now Blu-ray, I was like, oh cool, it's like a kind of like a Godzilla giant monster fighting TV show. And in fact, in one episode of the old Ultraman show, they repurposed one of the Godzilla suits. They dolled it up just a little to look a little bit different and it was a creature that Ultraman fought. So. I always thought it was really cool. So I've never, well, this is a couple years ago, the drive-in that I work at, the Mahoning Drive-In Theater in Lee Height in Pennsylvania was able to screen the then new Ultraman movie and the one that came out before that. So they still do, they've been doing over the last almost 60 or so years, they have been doing new Ultraman series every once in a while and then doing occasional feature films, feature films, <laughs> theatrical films. And this is one of those. So it basically says, okay, there's this basic plot of the film is there's a bunch of giant monsters that are attacking Tokyo. And it, it's this one's funny too. It's straight faced funny, but it's knowingly funny. Where they're like, for some reason, you know, they just keep attacking here and nowhere else. And the rest of the world thinks we should foot the bill to fight these things because it only happens here. And they, they make references to, you know, nobody else has this problem, why don't you help us out? And the group has been formed, as always happens in a lot of these uh, Japanese giant monster movies. There's G4, so there's some kind of the Godzilla fighting team. There's this force that helps coordinate with the military and scientists to figure out how to stop these giant monsters that are consistently turning, you know, sections of Japan into rubble. And amongst all this, all of a sudden, one of these monsters is attacking. This giant silver-suited being shows up and defeats it and then goes away. And then later, Ultraman starts showing up. They, they name it Ultraman, and then later a slightly different looking Ultraman shows up. And then we, as the film goes on, we figure out, or we are told, who Ultraman is, why Ultraman is, and it becomes similar to the old TV show with, with some updates. So um, very, very fun movie. This was fun. This was uh, a little under two hours. It never dragged for me. It packs a lot into that two hours. Um, as a friend of mine said, it felt like multiple episodes of a TV show crammed into one movie. There is a subplot about this alien that comes and is sort of benevolent, and then that thing kind of gets resolved and goes away, and you're like, well, did that need to be in this movie? It was cool, but now the movie's kind of about something else. I don't know. Um, giant monsters look great. 
Uh, I don't know the ratio between guys in suits and CGI. I think it was a mix, but it looks like guys in suits. Whatever they did, it looks like the old TV show. The music is reminiscent of the old TV show. The Ultraman design, over the years through his many incarnations and series, Ultraman has had different looks. This looks like the original Ultraman. And funny enough, when I went to see this, it was a tiny crowd because this movie has not been given a major release. It's playing all over the country on like a thousand screens or something like that. But it's, when I say major release, I didn't see any trailers for this online or in the theater. I didn't see any online ads for this. I never saw a poster for this in the theater. I happened to see that it was on the theater's website. And if you didn't know that and didn't bother to research what it was, you would have no idea what this was. So uh, it was packed with fans of Ultraman. And behind me was a guy, I'm gonna guess he's probably in his 60s, and his kid, who was probably in their teens, and the guy was saying, "He just, I just hope they get the suit right. I just hope it looks like the original suit. And the kid goes, it's not a suit. And the guy's like, well, what are you talking about? It's CGI. I loved that it was a kid who knew Ultraman and knew about this movie. I love that it was an adult who was a fan that was sitting next to me or behind me. And I love when the, when the Toho logo came up. And this was, the film that I saw was dubbed in English. And some people are really adamant about wanting to see Japanese content one way or the other. For me, I generally prefer seeing the original language and hearing the actual actors' performances but I did grow up seeing Godzilla movies dubbed. And the performances, dubbing performances, they can be okay, they're usually not. They usually feel like they're making fun of the content. For this, I didn't mind. I actually thought I was getting a subtitled version and this may be in theaters both ways. It might be depending on the showtime you get one or the other, but there weren't subtitles when the, the Toho logo came up and the kid behind me was like, Toho, and I was like, this is fantastic. This kid knows what the Toho logo looks like. So uh, this was, movie was a lot of fun. It was, uh, it, like I said, it moved right along. Perfect for all audiences. Nothing offensive in this movie. A lot of humor in this film. Really interesting camera angles. Uh, they said the way I saw this, it opened up with an introduction by the actor who plays Ultraman in the movie, the alter ego, the human Ultraman alter ego, and then by the director. And the director said it was shot during COVID. And um, so it doesn't take place the indoor, there are not a lot of indoor sequences inside. And sometimes I think it was shot in such a way that people maybe weren't too close to each other, but a lot of interesting angles. Very often angles from like under the table looking at somebody's face across the room. And I was just, I was impressed that I was just like, you know, they could have shot this in a very normal pedestrian way, but it was a little bit more dynamic than that. As I said, the effects are great. Uh, not a ton of giant monster action, but a lot of Ultraman action. And I was just so happy to be able to have seen this in the theater. If you can see this in a theater, somehow do it. If this is something that you can see streaming or on video, I would recommend it. Whether you watch it dubbed or subtitled, uh, it's just, it's so much fun. And I hope this does well enough or did well enough in Japan, which probably is what makes more of a difference to get more of these. I would be cool if we had Ultraman movies every once in a while. I don't know what the plan is for it, but on the whole, I really enjoyed Shin Ultraman, and uh, I hope you have a chance to see it.